Harry's wife. Why does she not hoover her exes? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. The hoover. What is it? Well, the hoover is an approach by a narcissist which chiefly is there to assert control over an appliance, i.e. a person. But it also can be there to obtain fuel, character traits, and also residual benefits. A hoover might be the narcissist going to see a victim, calling round at their house, or just walking past so they're seen from the window without necessarily going and knocking on the door. A hoover might encompass a telephone call to the victim, a text message, a social media message, an O-style written letter, the sending of a gift, an act of vandalism. There are hundreds of different types of hoovers that can take place. Sometimes there are hoovers by proxy, where the narcissist utilises a lieutenant or a member of the coterie to carry out the hoover. If you want to understand more about hoovering, I'd recommend that you read my excellent books, No Contact and Black Hole, which tell you more about the subject. One of the common things that many people find when they've been ensnared with a narcissist is the risk of being hoovered by the narcissist. Where you are a intimate partner primary source, the greatest risk tends to be that you get what's called the initial grant hoover, where if you have escaped the narcissist, the narcissist adopts a blitzkrieg approach, bombarding you with attempts to tr draw you back in into the relationship. If that doesn't happen, there can still be what are known as follow-up hoovers, sometimes designed to draw you back into the relationship, but sometimes just there to assert control over you and draw fuel, and not resurrect the main relationship that existed. So, for example, an ex-girlfriend of mine I might contact out of the blue because she's come up on my radar and I deem that it's appropriate to contact her. I do so belinely. Oh, I was just thinking about you and wondering how you're getting on. Are you still in X job? Her response provides me with fuel, demonstrates she's under control, and there may be a little bit of a back and forth, but I have no need to start a new relationship with her. She came on my radar, she had to be controlled, and I did so through the hoover, perhaps through a text message or a telephone call or a social media message. But it isn't the case that I necessarily want to resurrect the relationship with her once again and make her my girlfriend. The reason being is I adopt a nomadic approach, whereby I draw somebody in, make them my intimate part of primary source, in the fullness of time disengage from them, and at the appropriate time appoint somebody new. And then that person ultimately is devalued and disengaged from, and I go and find somebody new. For someone of my abilities as the ultra, it's easy enough to get people. Very easy. Some people think, oh, it must be exhausting swapping partners in such a way, but no, it's what I'm designed to do. Other narcissists don't adopt a nomadic approach. They might, for instance, involve themselves with an intimate partner primary source who they then disengage from and they choose somebody else. And then when they disengage from that second one, they go back to the first one, because they're painted white again. And then they give them a new golden period, then they're devalued and disengaged from again, and they go back to B. And that person ping-pongs between A and B and A and B. In other instances, it might be that the narcissist has what's seen as an anchor, so that they are in a relationship with that person, they cheat on them, they go off with somebody else, person B, they get rid of B and come back to A. They then have a golden period with A, and then cheat on them again, this time with C. And then they go off with C. And then C is disengaged from. And they go back to A. And then they cheat again, but this time with D. And they go off with D, before disengaging from D, and then returning to A. That again is a different dynamic. And if you watch my video, The Four Classes, it tells you about the different types of dynamics that exist between narcissist and primary source victim, referencing the nomadic approach, ping pong, anchor and hybrid. But what of Harry's wife? Whilst many narcissists do come back and hoover their exes, the reason being is you belong to us from the moment that you've entered our fuel matrix. This doesn't mean that we're going to deal with you each and every day, 
But it does mean that if you come back up on the radar, perhaps you have approached us to say, why have you left us and gone off with that person? Or where's that money you owe me? Or that you might just be foolishly wishing us Merry Christmas. You bring yourself back up on the radar. Sometimes it's not of your doing. Somebody else might remind us of you. Or something reminds us of you. We smell a fragrance. Or we see a car that reminds us of you. Or you just pop into our heads. But there's always a risk you could be hoovered, because there's always a risk that you could come back upon our radar. And then our narcissism determines, do we hoover you, i.e. the direct assertion of control. And if we do, then you get that hoover. But with Harry's wife, is she hoovering her exes? Well, first of all, we don't know for certain, because it could be that she gets back in touch with Corey, or Trevity Trev Trev. There's no information to confirm that's the case. But it might be that she does hoover those exes. It might be that they ignore her, and therefore she gets nowhere with them. Or it might be that they just politely say, yes, nice to hear from you, hope you're okay, and it never ends up being reported on in the press. But let us assume that, since it's never discussed, that she has any involvement with the likes of Trevor Engelson or Corey Vitiello, and other exes that we know about, that she isn't hoovering them. Why? Well, quite simply, it's this. First of all, those exes might not be coming back upon the radar. It could be that they are staying well away from her. So the likes of Corey and Trevor focusing on their lives, they are not making the mistake of contacting her and saying, why did you post the rings back, you unreasonable bitch? Or, I think you were cheating on me with ginger bollocks. Is this true? Instead, they don't contact her, they don't go to see her, they don't send her messages, they don't get a member of their group to contact her, so they don't bring themselves on her radar. Thus, if they're not on the radar, they simply don't exist, and thus there can be no hoover. Of course, even if they don't place themselves on her radar, they could still end up there, as previously mentioned, because she is reminded of them by something, by someone, or they just pop up on the radar. And therefore, in all likelihood, they will have popped up on her radar from time to time. Why then has she not hoovered them? Well, quite simply, at that point of when they come up on the radar, the narcissism asks in her subconscious, is Corey under control? So let's say, for example, she has eaten something that reminds her of something that Corey once cooked. Therefore, he has come up on the radar. The narcissism asks in the subconscious, is Corey under control? There's no information about Corey, and therefore the answer has to be he is not under control. Her narcissism then must obey the first law of narcissism, which is all appliances must be brought under control and kept under control at all times. Therefore, the narcissism must apply its mind to causing Harry's wife to bring Corey under control, and the first consideration is to do so through the direct assertion of control, i.e. hoovering. And simply, it's like a set of scales. And on that scales are some things which mean it's likely she'll hoover him and other things that it's not likely. So it takes into account matters such as, is he with somebody else? Is she with somebody else? And where are they in that dynamic? How easy is it to hoover that person? Would she have to get on one of her private jets and fly across the ocean? Or could she just send a text message? Has that person wounded her recently? And if so, how extensive was that wounding and how recent was that wounding? And there are lots of other factors that go into the mix also. And basically, the narcissism evaluates it like a set of scales and comes up with an answer as to yes, Hoover, or no, don't. And it would appear that for Harry's wife, as and when her exes pop up on her radar, her narcissism tells her, don't Hoover. Initially, This will have been because she was in the golden period with ginger bollocks. And essentially, the narcissism, remember, not only has to control who comes up on the radar in terms of Trevor or Corey, but also ginger bollocks. And it's not going to cause her to do something which would disrupt control of the Prince of Pink Pancakes. He would be thinking, why the dickings are you ringing up Corey? What's all that about? And that would mean that he would be challenging her control. So her narcissism, when she was in the golden period with Harry even if the other exes came up on a radar, would not compel her to reach out to them by way of a hoover, and she would assert control indirectly or by staying in a position of withdrawal. Of course, Harry is in sustained devaluation, where he's being sent to the chicken coop, 
he's having the pink pods turned into pink pancakes, and he gets occasional respite periods alongside that. When he's in devaluation, that increases the risk of her reaching out to Hoover and X. However, it may well be that as a consequence of facade management, and it might be that she's a nomadic type, that her narcissism isn't interested in bothering with what's gone before, and instead would rather look at new opportunities instead. Accordingly, the reasons why she has not hoovered her exes are, first of all, they may not have been coming up on the radar. Secondly, when they eventually do, because you always will do at some juncture. Her narcissism has decreed it's not appropriate to do so, because the factors suggest that the Hoover would unbalance control of other people and or be unlikely to meet with success, and therefore, as a self-protecting defence mechanism, causes her not to Hoover. Thirdly, it may also be influenced by the fact that her brand of narcissism is one of a nomadic nature, where she seeks out new opportunities, this certainly seems to be the case. Her history does not suggest that she's bounced backwards and forwards between other appliances in the way that some narcissists do, but rather she draws somebody in, seduces them, devalues them, sucks them dry, disengages from them and moves on to somebody else, rinse and repeat. Some narcissists keep going back and back and back to the same person, interspersing them with others. Some narcissists bounce between two different primary sources. You can't have two primary sources at once, One's a primary, one's a secondary, and then they swap, becoming former intimate partner and then intimate partner, and then back to intimate partner, and the other person becomes former intimate partner. She doesn't do that. Her style is more nomadic. Draw somebody in, use them, disengage from them, move on to the next person. Thus, she doesn't hoover her exes as far as we are aware for the reasons that I've outlined. It might be that she might have some form of contact with them and even if she does it's purely only a follow-up hoover she does not engage with them once again to resurrect the relationship i'm hg tudor thank you for listening